Uh, welcome everyone. I'm Peter Knudsen, an NTSB Media Relations Specialist. Um, Acting Chairman Bruce Landsberg, and that's L-A-N-D-S-B-E-R-G, will provide some remarks on the research report on preventing turbulence related injuries in Part 121 air carrier operations, and then we'll take your questions. Also here is the study manager, Nathan Doble, and that's D-O-B-L-E. Um, to ask a question, select the question icon on the upper right hand of your screen. It's the little bubble with a question mark inside it. Uh, type in your question along with your name and media affiliation and submit it. I will read the questions. This Microsoft Live event does not allow you to um, uh, ask a question uh, 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 verbally. It will have to be written. So with that, I will turn it over to Acting Chairman Landsberg. Thank you, Peter. We just uh, concluded the uh, the board meeting on the uh, uh, turbulence and uh, air carrier study, and a couple of things really stand out. Um, first off, the majority of the injuries occur uh, to flight attendants and to uh, passengers who don't have their uh, seat belts uh, fastened. Um, there seems to be uh, on descent typically below about 20,000 feet, again, where most of the uh, injuries occur. And one of the things that has been a, a, an ongoing uh, emphasis area for NTSB is the uh, inability to get pilot reports or PIREPs into the system so that everybody can start to get an idea of whether a particular forecast is accurate or not. And uh, the National Weather Service has been uh, supportive in this area. They'd like very much to know if they put out a forecast, if they actually hit the mark. Um, the FAA's current system, and in fact has been this way for about two decades, just doesn't work very well. So we've had quite a number of uh, recommendations to them uh, uh, along that point. Uh, the other area that uh, came up during the board meeting was the need for both FAA and for the airlines to really encourage people, perhaps mandate, that uh, for uh, young uh, children under the age of two, that they be carried on board in an approved child carrier, just as we require in automobiles. And the, um, the challenges uh, there are that, uh, uh, Again, the FAA has not been particularly responsive. They say, well, it's a cost benefit uh, situation. And uh, uh, we think that uh, this, this really doesn't hold a lot of water. But uh, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you might have. And uh, Mr. Doble is here to, to back me up and bail me out uh, in case I misspeak. So uh, thank you. OK, Acting Chairman Landsberg, the first question comes from Sean Broderick uh, of Aviation Week. Today's proceedings did not include much discussion on using aircraft generated EDRs to improve real time turbulence reporting. What is the board's uh, view on EDR collection uh, reporting potential and what are the biggest shortcomings? Uh, thank you, Sean. Uh, I think this is sort of like that spaghetti sauce. It was buried inside the, uh, the report. Um, there, first off, there doesn't seem to be a consensus on which type of EDR that we use. Uh, we've got uh, typically, I believe, three different uh, versions of it. Uh, obviously, it would be nice to have a consensus on that. So one EDR matches uh, another EDR. Uh, the automated aspect is, is tremendously valuable. And I think uh, there's some, some questions relative to the, uh, the technology here that needs to go along. Mr. Doble, do you have anything that you'd like to add? Uh, I'd just say that, um, you know, definitely some of the, uh, the advantages of using um, EDR versus um, uh, PyREPs are that um, there's an opportunity to have uh, better accuracy as far as um, the location of the turbulence, the time of the turbulence. Um, but certainly it does require a bit more in terms of aircraft equipage and, and infrastructure to be able to uh, disseminate that data. Yeah, one of the things that we found in the uh, report is that on average, when a pirate does get through the system, and it seems that 
based on the best estimate we have at this point, only one in 10 makes it into the uh, uh, national airspace system. Uh, it's often in, in error by about 25 miles, oftentimes because the crew is busy dealing with the airplane and, and solving whatever problems they may have before they have a chance to submit to PIREP. So uh, uh, the automated systems would, would be tremendously helpful. And the next question is from Alan Levin of Bloomberg. I think it's fair to say that this issue area doesn't have a single simple fix. Can you speak to how much of an improvement can be made if all or most of the recommendations are addressed? Do you believe it would be significant? That's a great question, Alan. Uh, yeah, I think I think it would be significant. And I think the benefits of, of getting in situ reports, pilot reports, either automated or live, uh, real time into the system would go far beyond just uh, the benefits to turbulence and far beyond just the benefits to the airlines. There are a lot of other users in the airspace. And the Weather Service has said that if they could get a really good feedback and real time feedback on how their forecasts are doing, uh, they can shrink down the size of the air mets and sig mets. And this should be of real interest to the airlines uh, they can improve their forecast accuracy from currently it's it's pretty good about uh, 12 to 24 hours out. They're thinking that they may be able to actually double that uh, with certain kinds of, of weather conditions. And, and for the public at large, uh, just beyond the aviation environment, there are huge benefits to getting the accuracy of forecasts uh, accurately and quickly uh, uh, reported. So it's not just the turbulence, but I think if all of these things were implemented, uh, you'd see a significant improvement in the forecasting and also in the safety and in, in air traffic control delays, uh, which of course we have lots of uh, at this point. So uh, yeah, huge benefits. Great. We don't have any additional questions uh, for any other reporters on the line, either um, if you haven't asked a question, feel free to do so now, or uh, either Alan or Sean, if you have a follow-up, uh, this will be the time. I'll give everybody about 15, 20 seconds to see if we have any additional questions come in. And Acting Chairman Landsberg, I do not have any additional questions, so this will go ahead and wrap up the uh, the meeting. Uh, the this um, Q and A session will be available on our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, the entire recording will be available uh, later on this afternoon. Uh, for any further questions, you can reach us at two zero two three one four six one. Uh, zero, zero. And oh, there is one more question. Uh, can the vice chairman describe the worst turbulence he he has experienced himself uh, for our readers? Uh, that's a good question. I, I make it a point to, to, to try to avoid uh, turbulence. Um, I can say up to this point, uh, living in the southeast, uh, we get an awful lot of thunderstorms and uh, I, I, I respect them greatly. Every once in a while, you get close enough that the, tar the tiger will snarl at you. Um, I would say in terms of prolonged turbulence, it's usually over the Appalachians uh, shortly after a cold front has gone through. And uh, I've been meaning to talk to air traffic control about that and say, you know, if I could move over and change my routing a little bit, that would be most appreciated. So uh, thank you for the question. And with no further questions, that will conclude today's, today's uh, meet availability. Thank you.